Hey guys, Dan Hood, Big DH2000 here, up bright and early on a Saturday morning. Um, school starts on Monday, so my son's up early. He's excited because he can't wait to go back and see his friends. My daughter is too, but she's a teenager, so getting up early is not in her uh, repertoire right now. Anyway, <clears throat> for some time now you've seen me, um, I've shown a few pictures of jigs, I've shown a few pictures of um, test models and everything. Well, I finally got a fancy one off the off all the jigs and off all the designs and ideas. Um, for those who don't know, this is a slight variation of the wave attachment that was developed and quite frequently used by Carl over at Peppermax Slingshots Catapults. Um, I put it on my stealth shot shape. Uh, sometime back I had to check color for uh, special pour, resin pour. So I made a slab first and I made sure it was big enough and thick enough to use on other slingshots once done because it doesn't matter what color it is, but the other job it did and I got close enough and it's got glow in the dark in it. So it glows really bright at night because the green and the yellow are just amazing. Um, <clears throat> for some time now, I've enjoyed 1632 tubes. Um, when you double them up like this, they're very similar in feel and pull and strength, especially the newer, ver the newer tubes that have come out. Uh, they're very similar to all the... Um, flat band latex we got that out there. I mean, they're a little heavier, so they come back a little clunky. Um, they may they may tap you on the hand a little bit if you're not careful and you don't get things adjusted right. And it, it feels a little bit different that way. But other than that, I've really enjoyed them, and they last so much longer, especially if you've got all the rough edges taken off down through the joint attachment method. <clears throat> As you can see, the wave basically weaves in and out of the slingshot and then comes down to a slot that holds it tight, basically uses friction. Uh, you can see at the top, I've got my loop that I've shown you guys how I do this. Just come down, pull it through, lock it in place. Uh, you take bands around, you take tubes around already like this, a band set. All you got to do is this in the field. doesn't take but about two, three seconds a, a fork. <clears throat> and then you can also adjust them a little bit in and out to get them to the right length. Because one thing that I was told <clears throat> by a very good tube shooter over in California, um, Chris is his name, uh, is that every batch of tubes is a little different and you got to tweak it a little bit. Uh, it's just the way it the way it happens. So I always have this option where I can shorten them or lengthen them really quickly if I want to until I find the sweet spot. And then if they wear out just a little bit and they start pulling a little long, I can once again make some adjustments. So anyway, <clears throat> I found I'm really accurate when the tubes come out of the top of the forks. I have no idea why. It's just I guess they perform just like the flat bands I used to use. So I'm I'm quite pleased with this shooter. I'm probably going to make a few more. Okay. Uh, if you guys are interested in getting one, just let me know. And I'll let you know what. It'll all be in this brown phenolic, though, because I need the strength to do this. And there are a few other ways I can do it and options, but I'm not really interested in trying those yet. I may be in some day. I also decided to get some leather and <clears throat> leather cord and braid it and use it. Make it a little more of a natural kind of slingshot. Anyway, hope you guys like it. Sorry if I rambled a bit. Uh, if you got any questions, you know where to post them.